Hello, folks, and welcome back to Chris White Reports. This is Chris in central Pennsylvania, talking about a topic that's near and dear to my heart as a conservationist, a person who treats the natural environment as a renewable resource that's here for our use on the planet, whether it's homo sapiens or other creatures on this planet, this environment is here for our use. It's our habitat. But let's talk about what's happening here with the fraud that's taking place across the world. A story in The Guardian today brought my attention once again to an issue that I talk about frequently. You see, today, like in much of Africa, 90% of Tanzanian households use charcoal or firewood to cook, and that's rapidly fueling deforestation across the country. Between 2015 and 2020, the Tanzanians lost almost 470,000 hectares. That's over a million acres of forest every year. Now, this is not a fantasy or made-up figure. That's the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization's figure for it. In Somalia, charcoal production has devastated the environment and funded Al-Shabaab's reign of terror. In Malawi, deforestation fouls spawning beds of tropical fish, jeopardizing aquatic species, accelerating topsoil erosion, and warms Lake Malawi, all of which are not good developments for the environment. But fear not, the dozens of developed states have a plan to ameliorate the climate crisis. They will punish their productive citizens to enrich the developing world. In Southern Africa, this green mail scheme is already bearing fruit for Africans at the expense of others. Namibia currently receives $110 million annually from the Green Climate Fund, an outgrowth of the Paris Accord scam. Now, that offsets about 11% of Namibia's trade deficit. But they also get other money. The French Development Agency funds $31 million in green projects across Namibia, and the Germans are pouring more money in for so-called green energy projects, including $5 million to build a rural wind and solar power desalinization plant. Ahead of the United Nations Climate Summit in Egypt earlier this year, South Africa's president announced a plan to help the country transition away from coal-fired power plants. Now, the problem with that, of course, is that South Africa gets 90% of its electricity from coal-fired power plants and has hundreds of years of coal deposits available to it. So how exactly is South Africa going to do this? by shuttering all electrical power generation? Perhaps South Africa can achieve this milestone. I mean, after all, under the African National Congress, ESCOM, the state-owned electrical utility, has already turned the country into the most romantic place in all of Africa, where millions dine by candlelight amid load shedding with a grid on the verge of collapse every single night. Now, while politicians steal from us to enrich South Africa and other developing nations over our sins and delivering modern transport, industry, innovation, medicine, exploration, technology, communications, just to name a few of our terrible sins, the climate zealots look the other way. But the fantasy of clean energy is not confined to events in Southern Africa. For example, here in North America, in blocking the Keystone XL pipeline, ecological fanatics simply created a situation where far more carbon is actually released into the environment. With oil sands petroleum not moving in largely gravity-fed pipelines to the Gulf states, it moves by rail or truck on icy, dangerous roads into the United States or across the fragile Rocky Mountains to British Columbia, where it is loaded onto tankers in an ecologically pristine and dangerous location for any anything to be sinking there. Loaded onto tankers for shipment across the Pacific to China's polluting refineries, enriching the Chinese communists in a net tragedy for the environment and for liberty. Meanwhile, as our politicians pick our pockets to reduce carbon in South Africa, they dramatically increase it with coal shipped all the way from South Africa to Europe rather than being burned in South Africa. Now, how does that make any sense? Does that make any sense at all to you? It doesn't. Coal sales from South Africa to Europe rose eightfold during the first six months of 2022 compared to 2021. So instead of burning the coal in South Africa, they want to leave South Africans in the cold in the dark without refrigeration, without electricity, at the whim of criminals and home invaders. The Netherlands, Germany, Poland, Denmark, France, Italy, and Ukraine are all rapidly increasing their coal imports from South Africa, while South Africa is trying to reduce its coal burning. Now, how on God's green acre does it make any sense to take coal in South Africa, mine it, instead of shipping it to power plants nearby, it's loaded into rail cars on the few functioning rail cars that are left, otherwise it's loaded on trucks, and shipped to Richards Bay, where it's shipped out of the country, all the way up the Atlantic, risking the ship sinking, something happening, delivered to Europe where it's burned. How is that less carbon? In the first five months of 2022, European countries imported more than 3 million tons of coal from South Africa. Now, the green energy net zero climate crisis noise is all about enriching the elites and impoverishing the serfs. That would be you 
and me. It's not about improving the quality of the planet, let alone the quality of life for its homo sapiens. If we're about our lives, instead of corrupt lithium mining in Zimbabwe, child labor in the Democratic Republic of Congo, African governments across the SADC region would long ago have built massive coal-fired and coal-bed methane-fired power plants to provide electricity, moving hundreds of millions away from relying on charcoal and firewood, dramatically reducing deforestation, pulmonary diseases as a consequence of burning charcoal and wood, erosion, and grinding poverty. And that's the bottom line here, folks. These people are grifters. They're thieves, they're liars, and they're misleading you. If you care about the environment, stop cutting down trees. If you care about the environment, use the source of energy that's the least polluting and the most widely available at the lowest cost so that you can develop your economy and use education and technology and innovation to come up with new ways and cleaner ways to burn fuel. Don't fall for the lies that are going on with solar photovoltaic panels, wind turbines, solar thermal, and all the other nonsense. Those all have a place. They're all useful, particularly in South Africa, where you can't rely on the government to deliver electricity. So what are you going to do? Turn to alternative means. But it's costly. It's toxic. Producing it produces as much or more carbon output and pollution as does traditional sources of hydrocarbons. Be an informed energy consumer and don't fall for the nonsense of the frauds from Kyoto and Paris, the United Nations, all of whom lie to you those electrical vehicles, where do you think those batteries go when they're finished with them? How much do you think they weigh? How much does the battery cost to replace in your electrical vehicle? That will shock you. Most of us can't afford the luxury of virtue signaling with an electric car. You can only afford an internal combustion engine motor vehicle, which is reliable and has been for well over a century. Well, folks, you decide. Deforestation, lung disease, or a smarter approach to energy consumption. Thanks a lot for tuning in. Be sure to become a subscriber and thank you for your support. Take care and have a productive next year.